this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a lead, create an existing uh, lead record. We're going to change the owner of a lead record and we're going to convert a lead record into a contact and an existing company. Now, depending on what type of Zoho CRM system you've got configured or how it's set up, the leads module may be and commonly is renamed to inquiries. So first of all, we're going to go into the leads module. Okay, it'll usually be the first or second one in on the left. It could be called leads, inquiries, etc. And in this page, you will see a whole bunch of leads. Or if you don't, you may need to create a new one. And remember that leads can come from all sorts of different avenues. Okay, they can come from the website, Facebook, any other social media platforms, forms that are on um, your website or other websites, or forms that you send out to customers through other means, through EDMs and things like that. To create a new inquiry or lead, you go up to the top right hand corner and click the plus button next to import, and then you type in the company's name. In this instance, I will use Bento as the company, and my name is Ben, so I'll add Ben and then Hinkley to this record, uh, and then my mobile number, and my email address. And then depending on what other fields you have on your screen here, then you need to fill out the rest of those um, fields as required, if you can. Um, also remember, like hopefully they're not, there's not too many fields there for you to capture. Um, sometimes you, depending on the type of business you have, you'll have lots of questions. Um, if you've really narrowed down your customer persona, uh, then again, you may just have only four or five fields on there. It is not, uh, a required set amount for you to have X amount. It's whatever you feel is comfortable to have on that screen. Okay. And what you need to do now is just up in the top right hand corner, click save. And what's happened now is that's created a uh, lead or an inquiries record inside the system. Okay. And now I've got that information captured in my database. There's a thing called lead status here. This menu could change depending on how you want it to appear to you and your audience. But basically, you can say that you've attempted to contact Ben, you're going to contact him in the future, it's lost, it's a junk lead, not contacted, pre-qualified or not qualified. They're just the default options that Zoro give. These may look different depending on how customized your system actually is. So when you're looking at this specific record here, you, up in the top right-hand corner, you can click Edit. And that will take us back to that editing screen that you saw when we were creating it. Or when you're looking at your record just like this, you'll notice here how I was able to click on that drop down menu, select a new value, and then click the little green tick. That is another way to edit the record as well. So they're the two ways that you can edit a record. If you press this arrow, it'll take you back to the grid screen on this page and you can see my lead or inquiry is at the top here on that top bar. And if you click on the lead name or the inquiry name, then you can click on my name and it will load that record back up. Nice, quick, simple and easy. One of the things that you'll find is the owner. So in Zoho, there is a lead owner or an inquiry owner. And what that means is essentially, the, the user who is the owner of that record should be actioning that specific record. They should be calling this person or they should be doing something with this record. It's the best way to put it. The, in certain instances, you can tell Zoho uh, with some lead assignment rules to actually automatically assign someone this lead or this inquiry if, uh, if, it, if it came through a certain form on the website um, or the person inquired about a certain uh, product on your site. So hence, the lead owner may change automatically or it may change manually. So we're gonna show you how to do it manually. 
what you do is you click on the lead or inquiry owner. You go down and you find uh, the other person in the list that you want to send this to. And then here it says, send an email notification to James List. And we can say, yep, send an email notification and say, change owner. What that's going to do is it's now changed owner to James. It's going to be up to him now to action this lead or inquiry. And he's also going to receive an email notifying him that he's actually been reassigned a new lead or inquiry. So he's got to action that. That's how you manually can do that. One of the major things is that leads are leads or inquiries are inquiries. And it's just real generic, basic, hi, I'm Ben and I'm interested in your product. Here's my email and phone number. And that's usually about as big as they get. Sometimes they might be some pre-qualified questions that they might have been asked through your, um, you know, through your onboarding process on your website or on social media, et cetera. However, what will happen is they're not a contact and they're not a company yet. What you need to do is you need to convert them into the system, into the live customer database by clicking this big giant green button in the top right hand corner called convert. So what you need to do is select that green button and then on the left hand side here it says add to existing company. So what's actually happened here is the system has found an existing Ardento company and it's going to show us how many existing records already exist. Now, if there were no records that already existed, it would just say it's creating a new company called Ardento. However, the system's automatically going to try and find existing companies or contacts uh, with, with that name. So I'm basically going to turn around and say, no, I actually want it to add to that specific company name. In this instance, we have four. We probably only need to have one, but yeah, this is a demo account. Just click on the one for Ardento and we're going to say done. And it says a new contact called Ben Hinckley will be created for the company. Right. That sounds perfect. Okay. And then it says create a new prospect for this company. So a prospect uh, is essentially going to be an opportunity. It is all part of the deals module. And I talk about that um, obviously in another video, which I'm going to be creating shortly after this one. And it's going to be all about, you know, the opportunities or the prospects that your company is going to be working on to try to bring them down a, a sales pipeline. So what's the next video in relation to that to understand more about that? In most cases, you are going to be ticking the box. Please note that you will be ticking the box in most cases. You're going to select how much this customer is potentially valued to you for. Now, that field may or may not exist for you or it may not even need to be there. There'll be a closing date. So the closing date is defined based on two things, either your company and internal procedures or it's going to be defined based on the customer. So the customer might want to have their solution from your company resolved at a certain time frame. So then hence you're going to have to put the closing date to be specifically defined as to you know, when it is that these people want their, um, their solution resolved from your company. The other one as well might be that they want something, but your organization will take, you know, four weeks to be able to deliver that um, service. So hence, therefore, you would need to put your buffer in. So the closing date is something that's either defined by you or your customer. You will need to set that date. The prospect name is going to be called Ardento. In most cases, you'll find that this will be just the client's name or maybe you might want to say, well, Ben Hinckley is the actual person we're speaking with, but the company is called Ardento. So we'll call it Ben Hinckley and Ardento. Now the stage. You'll see this in the next video in relation to that on the uh, prospects and opportunities um, module, but the stage is going to be all about how and where this customer is currently positioned down that pipeline about getting them to the point where they're going to sign up um, you know, they're going to proceed with the company and you're going to sell them something and, and they're going to buy. 
in, in most instances, you'll probably find that everything will start at the very first stage. And the very first stage will be defined as something like initial meeting or quote sent or proposal sent or um, something along those lines or communication or phone conversation has already happened. So hence, um, you'll find that the stage will automatically select based on the first one and then you can just leave it at that. Uh, currently at the moment, ignores campaign source. Uh, we will go into that a little bit later on. Uh, contact role. If this specific contact, Ben Hinckley, is a specific person for the organisation, then you can pre-fill that out. If this uh, form, if these drop-down menus um, in here, like the options don't make any sense to you, you can also customise them as well. So what we're going to do now is going to click convert. And the system has now converted that over and it says here company name is Ardento. So it's matched it to an existing Ardento. It's created a contact called Ben Hinckley and the prospect has been created called uh, Ardento Ben Hinckley as well. Like I said, prospects module um, is basically also known as opportunities um, or deals. So it depends on uh, obviously how your organization wants to call new opportunities and deals with clients. But essentially um, you will see in most cases, it'll look like this. It is like a uh, Kanban view with these different stages and you can kind of see where everyone is at. But you can see here that it's gone in and it's created one of them for us. So that's basically it. That's how you um, convert a lead. Thanks for watching this video and if you haven't yet, then check out the next video on the opportunities and deals module.